Hello, this is Colin. And uh, if you recall from yesterday's episode, I just uh, bought a couple of uh, first flush Darjeelings that uh, came into town. Now, of course, the first flush is the first uh, pickings of the leaves and buds from the tea plants of the season. So everyone who has like real tea experts and aficionados, I, I don't claim to be an expert, um, are very excited, of course, because first flush is the freshest and the finest teas that uh, that you get. And um, so yesterday I was looking at, uh, what was it, Gitapara, Gitapara Darjeeling, which I, I quite enjoyed. Uh, it had a subtlety of flavor that I wasn't used to. I wasn't a fan of Darjeeling's in the past simply because I found it weak. But now, um, uh, the Darjeeling has been referred to as the champagne of teas, and I can sort of understand why, because um, you really have to you know, educate yourself, I suppose, about, about the tea. Um, and if you do, you are rewarded with the subtleties in flavor uh, of the fine tea. Now, this one is Makai Bari uh, Darjeeling which is a tea estate um, in actually the same province, the same part of Darjeeling as, as yesterday's tea. Some of these places, these tea gardens can be pretty small, relatively speaking. I mean, uh, less than industrial size. Uh, the Makabari tea plantation was actually founded in 1859 by a, a Girishi Chandra and stayed in the same family until last year. It was uh, the Ban the Banerjee family uh, was running it until last year when it was bought up by some tea consortium. Now, uh, the Makabari tea is a fair trade tea, employs about 2,000 people, many of them actually from Nepal. Uh, the, the estate is actually in a very narrow neck of land for India. It's, it's just where um, Nepal, Sikkim, and Bhutan surround it to the north. Uh, not that far away, it's sort of a land bridge between uh, Bhutan and Bangladesh. So a little further south is Bangladesh, and then there's a thin group of uh, line, uh, land, of Indian land, that goes into uh, the Assam region, which of course is also famous for its tea. So... Um, Darjeeling is, of course, grown in the mountains, and like I say, it's a lighter cup of tea, a more subtle taste kind of tea, something that, you know, rewards uh, careful drinking. And it's also, it's kind of a golden color, really. I, I think that's the best way to describe it, you know, perhaps slightly orange. I may have oversteeped it. But, uh... This particular tea garden produces some of the finest teas in India. Well, certainly some of the most expensive teas in India. Uh, I understand that a kilogram of tea from this plantation went for 1,850 US dollars at some point. So this, this is a famous tea. This tea was the official tea partner of the Beijing Olympics. It's also the official tea of the 2014 World Cup soccer tournament in Brazil. So, yeah, this, uh, this is, people know about this tea. And it's just amazing to me that not only do you have a chance to buy tea from this plantation at a pretty reasonable price. This is about $11, less than $11 for 100 grams at uh, Granville Island Teas, if they, if they still have some. Um... You can also stay there. There's there's this whole network in Darjeeling of tea plantations where you can go and stay with the locals, and from, you know from plantation to plantation to plantation. And if you go on the website and take a look at the pictures, the tea plantations are breathtakingly beautiful. On the high mountains with these beautiful, vivid green plants stretching out as far as the eye can see, and and the mists. It, it, um, and, and it's, it's fair trade, so uh, the people there supposedly are treated pretty well. So, anyway, 
here we are. Uh, I, I will continue to educate myself on uh, the wonders of Darjeeling. And, uh, well, happy first flush and cheers. <laughs>